Hello everyone, I'm Aman from Team 4. Today we would like to share with you guys about the three OB areas in our movie that is Finding Nemo. I'm going to talk about the motivation theory, especially the expectancy theory. The expectancy theory was proposed by Victor Brown in 1964. This theory says that employee's motivation is an outcome of how much an individual wants a reward. The effort will lead to expected performance and the belief that the performance will lead to rewards. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna get him out of here. We're gonna help him escape. Escape? Really? We're all gonna escape. Gil, please, not another one of your escape plans. Sorry, but they, they just, they never work. Yeah, why should this be any different? Because we've got him. Me? You see that filter? Yeah. You're the only one who can get in and out of that thing. What we need you to do is take a pebble inside there and jam the gears. You do that, and this tank's gonna get filthier and filthier by the minute. Pretty soon, the dentist will have to clean the tank himself. And when he does, he'll take us out of the tank, put us in individual baggies, then we'll roll ourselves down the counter, out of the window, off the awning, into the bushes, across the street, and into the harbor. It's foolproof. Who's with me? In this situation, Gil's goal was escaping the tank and going back to the ocean. And once he got Nemo, who became more confident about his plan, because Nemo was the smallest fish who can easily get into the tank's filter. So he thinks if they put more efforts in blocking the tank filter, they can easily make the tank become dirty. That is their good performance. And once the tank become dirty, the dentist will get all of them out of the tank for cleaning and they can escape the tank. That is their reward. And finally, this reward help Gil and his team members to go back to the ocean. That is their personal goal. So here we are having five levels of rating scale from not at all effective to extremely effective. I give level three of rating scale for Gil because his plan was not that much effective. Since this was his personal plan and the person who directly implemented his plan was Nemo, not he himself. I understand the motivation of Gil when he got Nemo. But Nemo was still new to the tank's environment and he is afraid. So it was not a good idea to let Nemo do Gil's dangerous plan. I think Gil should motivate Nemo to become more confident and he should predict the risk before let Nemo do that. Hello everyone, I'm Kristen from Team 4 and now I would like to talk about teamwork. There are five stages of team development from Bruce Tuckman. First is forming the state of uncertainty, then is storming the state of conflict, and then is norming the cohesiveness between team members. The first stage is performing and finally is adjourning the team prepared for its disbandment. Keep swimming! Just keep swimming! 
swimming. Just keep swimming. Almost there. Keep swimming. situation, when the net caught hundreds of fish, including Dory, at first, they were just swimming in every direction. They just think about how an individual can get out of the net, not everyone. However, when Nemo say, I know what to do, the team is forming. After that, Nemo had conflict with his father. Mullen was scared his son would be in danger, and he imposed his fear on Nemo. They in this conflict stage. Then, Marlin gradually agreed with Nemo's solution. Dory also told all of it about Nemo's idea. They believed in each other and followed the instructions of Marlin and Nemo. They agreed on their role and worked in a team. At this time, they measured the effectiveness in the team outcomes and goals. Then they performed their work properly. They made headway, putting pressure on the part of the boat that held the net, allowing the net to crash into the ocean and free lots of leafy fish. Finally, they had completed their task, so they quickly disbanded the team. I would like to rank level 4 very effective for the effectiveness based on characteristics of an effective team from Claire and Parker. They had clear purpose, which were escaping the nest. In terms of informality, they were attention because they were in urgent circumstances. There was no much discussion for participation, only Nemo and Marlin were participated. They are good listener when Marlin listened to Nemo and Arafid listened to Marlin. For civil line disagreement, there were disagreement from Marlin and he was uncomfortable with Nemo action the first time. They had consensual decision when all they all agree with Nemo's solution and on fishes were open for communication. And they also have clear work assignment when words were distributed among team members. However, they had no external relation for help. And Nemo, Marlin, and Dory sell the ship. They had star diversity when Nemo focused on goal setting and develop solution. Marlin focused on the leading. Dory focused on transferring the measures. And other fans emphasized attention to their task. There was no self assessment where the team didn't stop to examine how well it's functioning and effectiveness. Since it is the emergency contest, there's no more time for them to cover all characteristics. However, they did their best and received the right outcomes. In other situations, they should care about all factors if they want to reach level 5 of effectiveness. This is Jugad Bhatia and I am from team 4. Our clients are Pixar and the Oceans. The scene that I have selected from the movie Finding Nemo is a scene where Marlin, Nemo's dad, is reunited with Nemo and Dory amidst the school of fish. I am going to be talking about certain aspects of leadership in this particular movie. Now I am going to be talking about certain leadership attributes that I found in my scene that I thought were of consequence. Let me take you through that slide. Yeah, here are some of the scenes. Here are some of the aspects of leadership that I found in the scene. The scene does a great job at providing clear direction and goal. In this particular scene, Nemo is the leader and he does a great job at providing clear direction and goals. Nemo immediately jumps into action and tells everyone to swim down and later cries, let's get to the bottom. He doesn't say we need to combine our strength to pull against the fishing net until we break the net. Instead, he is able to see the ocean bottom. He provides a clear, further, actionable goal of getting to the bottom. He doesn't complicate things, whereas he is just trying to give you a clear, actionable goal. Another key attribute is that he always keeps it simple. Throughout the scene, you see him keeping things very, very simple. Once the direction is set and people are moving in sync, he continues to deploy the same simple strategy and message that is understandable, achievable, 
and actionable. He says, keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming. You see him repeating this throughout the scene. Whatever they were doing in his head as the leader, it seemed to work. As the simple message propagates throughout the group, you can hear everybody else saying the same thing. This is where leadership actually ends up becoming, ends up attributing to small contributions leading to greater and bigger results. The next thing that I thought was a very, very great leadership lesson in this scene was that he gets people around him to enforce the vision and the goal. Now, what is so key about this scene is that he tells every, he tells all the fish to swim down. He doesn't stop them in the middle. He tells them to enforce the goal. He sets small sub leaders in different departments. Marlin is taking the uh, taking care of the bottom most department of the uh, fishing net, whereas he himself is inside the net. He and Dory try and influence the people around them. This is how a leader leader uses tactics to get people around him to enforce the goal. Another key attribute that I found in this particular scene was that he encourages everyone. Now, how, how they do that is he makes sure that Marlin and Dory are on the same page. Once that is done, he understands that goals are still hard and long to achieve. In spite of having clear direction, in spite of having simple goals, in spite of getting people around you to enforce your vision and goals, encouragement and positivity is something that a leader really needs to ensure in a team. He does this by telling his father the encouraging words of, come on dad. And whereas his father also realizes the importance of encouragement in this particular scene. And he always, he tells him in the scene again and again that he's doing a great job. The journey is always long and hard, but it is essential for a leader and other team members to rely on each other to achieve these goals. I would like to conclude my uh, leadership uh, aspect of this particular um, scene by telling you what my particular rating for this uh, scene and the organizational effectiveness was. For this particular scene, I would say that the leadership scale is pretty high. I would say that he was very, very effective in getting to the goal, which was getting all the fish out of the net and saving Dory. When it comes to organizational effectiveness, Finding Nemo has taught me that at an organizational level, one mustn't be scared of making mistakes, but learning from them and making sure that things eventually work out and actually mean what an, organi what an effective organization is. So in, the, in totality, I would say in this movie, the, uh, the organizational uh, effectiveness is moderately effective, which is I would give it a three, three pointer on five. Why this is so is that throughout the movie, in the beginning, they do make some mistakes. Now, the effectiveness of, of an organization is not whether it makes mistakes or not. It ultimately means how one make, makes mistakes and how, one is, uh, how an organization, uh, organization is able to mitigate the mistakes that it is making and actually lead to improvement. In this particular aspect, I would say, that in spite of making mistakes in the beginning, the leaders and the team members throughout the movie actually make sure that they don't repeat their mistakes. They fall into a lot of trouble. A lot of unfortunate things happen with people throughout the movie. They, they may not be initially very, very aware of what was around them, but once they do make these mistakes, they make sure that these mistakes aren't made again. Thank you.